We will be making Nocturne Alley from Harry Potter and first I sketched uh, what I wanted it to look like on a piece of wood but I changed materials later on you will see and then I drew my Borgen and Berg's storefront on a piece of cardboard. I used some architecture cardboard but you can really use anything like an empty cereal box or pizza box anything that's in your house and that seems convenient for you. So my current plan with the book nook is to have the opening right here. The mirror will go here and Borgen Burks is going to be here. And then this side, I'm going to have to invent <laughs> A store because in the movies we don't see a lot of the Nocturne Alley and also in the Harry Potter books there's only really Borgen and Burks mentioned so I'm gonna have to invent a little building and a little store but I'm excited for that and I'm not sure what it's going to be but I'm gonna figure it out as I work on it. After I cut the holes out of the storefront, I went on to make the windows and for that I cut out thin black paper stripes. I used black paper so I didn't have to paint it and it was more convenient for me but you can use anything you have and paint it any color that you like. I glued it onto some clear plastic sheets. Again, you can use any clear piece of plastic. Just maybe look through your trash can and you'll most likely find something, I promise. I almost always use wood glue, except for instances like this where I have to work with plastic and then I use this I think it's a sort of super glue and it just works way better with materials like plastic but for anything else like cardboard wood uh, <laughs> paper I like to stick to wood glue because it works best for me but you use whatever works best for you
I almost always use air drying modeling clay when making brick walls and house fronts but people often ask me which kind of clay I use and to be honest with you this is a really cheap one that my best friend got for me I think from the dollar store or Teddy what's it called in Germany and I really like this one because it's quite sticky and this means it sticks to the cardboard underneath very well and I used to always put glue underneath the clay so that it would stick to the cardboard obviously but now I don't have to do this anymore and when I run out of this I will definitely try to get a new new one a new of the cheap one because so far this has been the best one so you don't always need fancy and expensive materials uh, because sometimes you'll be surprised how far you will get with the very cheap stuff And then I decided to switch materials and instead of wood, like I used in the beginning, I used this architecture foam board and I found it at my architecture store and it's pretty cool because it's very light, I like the material, um, but like I said, you can use any cardboard or wood that works for you. Just look around your house and I'm pretty sure you'll find something. I went on to make the roof of the other house and I made the base out of cardboard and after that I made some roof shingles, I think that's what it's called, out of paper. I took some paper stripes and I cut them into little pieces and after that I weathered them a little bit by crunching them up in my hands which didn't work as well as I thought it would and then my camera died on me and it didn't record me putting all those shingles onto the rooftop but I hope you can see what I did there I just glued them on with wooden glue and placed them all there and it took a very long time I like giving everything a black base coat because it just adds way more depth to your buildings and also it will give it a temporary very cool gothic look which I enjoy a lot. By the way I almost always use acrylic paint and I don't even know which brand, I just go to the craft store or the art supply store and I take what is cheap and it normally works very well for me.
before weathering the roof I took my tweezers and I kind of twisted the roof shingles around so that the whole roof looks more rough and more textured. For weathering and making it look dirty, it is quite essential that your brush is as dry as possible and you maybe want to take a greyish to white color and also you can use black to dark grey color and you want to brush your object very lightly. This sounds so weird but I like going outside and looking at old houses and trying to figure out what makes them look old? How and where does the dirt collect? And what makes them look like people have been living inside them for ages? I think that's pretty essential to understanding how you have to build your miniatures. glued in these pictures so that there would actually be something to look at behind the windows and then I used a hot glue gun to put in my fairy lights. I always work with fairy lights because I can't be bothered to deal with electronics and for the Borgen and Burke's part I painted the fairy light screen because I wanted green light to shine through the windows and it actually worked. If you switch it on, the light looks green and that's pretty cool, I think. And then I was unhappy with the Borgen and Berg's color, so I changed it a little bit. I wanted it to look more like actual bricks. I don't know if I managed to do that, but at least I tried, right? And now I use some model making grass. You can find that on the internet or in a model making shop or an architecture store. And I really like this bottle because it was very cheap, like 2 or 3 euros. And because the grass is made out of plastic, when you shake the whole thing, the grass gets uh, static, I guess. I don't know what it's called in English. And then it will stand up tall. Uh, you will see what I mean in a few seconds. So I use watered down wood glue and then I just... Like with a little salt shaker, I put the grass on and it will stick to the glue, obviously.
and then I also glued on some moss. I love this part and I always do way too much moss because <laughs> I, I like putting it on so much and it makes everything look so alive. If you think something is missing from your diorama, I highly recommend putting some moss in and also some some little stones like I did here. It really puts everything together, I think. And then I finally put in the mirror and I miscalculated and that's why I had this terrible gap right there and I decided to cover it with a pipe and for creating a metal effect I paint everything black and then I go over it with pencil or a graphite stick like I have here and I also put some moss on there and I just glued it in there and see the gap is gone. You want to see something funny? So that's the reality of building miniatures. Or maybe I'm just depressed. Well, who knows? What do we have here? We have my thermos. We have this asparagus fern. And he's doing well. He's okay. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I've been looking for this tape yesterday. And for some reason I didn't see it laying there right in front of me, okay. Then we've got some nice tea bags and some makeup stuff right here. And don't don't ask me why there's a glass of honey on my desk. I, I <laughs> really can't tell you. And what else? Oh, here's a lot of little figures of myself. Also, don't ask. And yeah, I think that's about it. We've got this crusty boy right here, but but he's also he's okay, I guess. 
just looks like this. It's a Calothea and, and they, they are little bitches. And yeah, look at this. I made this myself. And we've got this post it uh, for all my German speaking people. I'm sorry that you had to read this. And uh, for all my English speaking folks or any other language. Um, uh, good for you. <laughs>